Hi, Nadine Nemba. You are our new mindset coach for, for all the, for almost all the masterclass we have this year at Collab West. So welcome, Nadine, to the team. Thanks a lot, Cara. I'm really happy to be on board with a topic that's so important, like the mindset and influences so much. A leadership mindset, entrepreneurship, collaboration. I think it's all around in the same I think overall corner of mindset, I think, for success. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, and you just named a few of the areas uh, where it is really important. So if I am an entrepreneur and my mindset doesn't fit in the way that it supports me, what I want to achieve, I will be in big trouble. And if I'm an entrepreneur, a leader, if I'm an innovator, and just to give you a few examples, and some of those we will also work on during 2023 in the masterclasses. Um, for example, I'm an innovator. So I'm really immersed in my ideas, in my projects. And because I'm an innovator, there will always be new things coming along. Uh, and a lot of things will develop from the ideas that I have. So constantly, great topics, great work, at the same time, constantly quite a lot of work and quite a lot of things where I could get myself lost in. From the positive side, this could mean that um, I really have this feeling of flow, I'm happy with my work, I'm successful. Uh, one idea emerges from the other, so that's the positive part. The negative part can be that uh, I'm losing myself in the sense of, do I still take care of myself? Am I still able to take care of my team? And this is where we also have the connection to leadership. Am I still able to do that? Because I have the personal resources uh, to take care of my team. How about my stress levels? Do I somehow manage to cope with those as well? Um, am I really good in rewarding myself and my team so all of those issues will influence um, how i'm taking care of myself and if you think about all of uh, uh, what i just mentioned this will have an issue on your success so i'm an entrepreneur i will need to motivate myself if i have employees i need to motivate my employees am i able to do that I'm an innovator. I've got constantly new things running around. Am I still able to stay resilient in the face of all of this? Mm -hmm. um, how about being um, in a collaboration with people? And well, sometimes we have the situation where it's a fantastic collaboration. And then we have those moments where you feel like, okay, I'm giving up because Collaboration means people come together, sometimes voluntarily, sometimes there's a framework, but still everybody has different projects than the one we are working on. And sometimes you feel like the project that you are in, it has the least importance, has the least priority, which can be frustrating, which can be difficult to keep up your spirits, to keep your resilience in those, uh, in those uh, moments. So also for collaboration, it's really important to take care of your mindset. And by the way, what we also included in the masterclass is already last year in December is this question of mindfulness, which can help me to keep up the spirits. So this is how we kicked off last year in December and uh, started those mindset masterclasses. And why mindset is so important in leadership for academics and researchers? I think for academics and researchers, we are talking about a kind of combination because usually as an academic and researcher, you will be an innovator because this is basically what academic work is about. You always search for things you can connect. Um, you have to do a lot of research. Very often you have those collaborations with um, other teams, with researchers at other in universities. Very often you have the situation that you really need uh, a lot of energy to get all the necessary and relevant information to get the necessary and relevant people together. So you are in a very similar situation or to turn it the other way around, you are at the same time an innovator, a collaborator, and very often also an entrepreneur for your scientific projects, which means all the things that we just discussed will have an impact on your work as well. 
So you will need to take care of yourself, of your team. You will need to include a lot of people, sometimes coming from different disciplines, even maybe with a different uh, mind uh, frame as well. And you will have to take care of those situations. You will have to be the leader of your scientific projects and you will need all the things we just discussed. Because mindset is linked with personal development and personal growth. Exactly. And you are a psychologist as well, Nadine. Yeah. So how is the brain health affecting our performance every day? So two questions in one, because what you just said, yes, the, the mindset is linked to um, a lot of things. So it's linked to uh, your performance, because if your mindset is a positive one, and we are very often talking about this different be difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Check out Carol Dweck for this, who wrote a book on it. So um, if my mindset is one that is orientated towards growth, this will mean it's easier for me to start new things. It's easier for me to keep up with you, uh, with uh, the things I'm working on. Um, it will help me to stay uh, on board, to stay resilient. It will help me to keep up even if there's a lot of maybe challenges that have come my way. That it will help me to keep up if there's a lot of no's I get. So uh, a lot of negative messages from a lot of people and I still need to keep on going. I still need to follow all of those things. And this is where I need this kind of growth mindset that will keep me in a positive situation. And then you were talking also about health. Oh yes, <laughs> because uh, just imagine, if my mindset helps me to keep up with all of those stresses, to keep up with all of those challenges, it will keep me in a balance and to put in very easy words, to feel good. To, although I've got no's, although I've got challenges, still I feel good and, and I feel balanced myself. So really deep within, I feel balanced. And just if you just imagine, Close your eyes for a moment and just imagine this kind of feeling that you're balanced. There's lots of things coming from the outside. They will maybe move you, but they will not topple you over. You will be able to move a bit. You should stay flexible. It's a bit like this picture that's often being used like a bamboo. So yes, I can move. And at the same time, I'm very stable, so I it will enable me to still follow my path and it will enable me to reach my goals and have a lot of success. And then with success comes something else. I think everybody knows that our brain is very busy when we are successful because uh, it will uh, take care that we get all of those hormones that we usually get when we are successful and that will boost our happiness and our happiness will give us energy to keep on going. So you could say it's a cycle. And the idea with this mindset is that what we try to do is not to have it a vicious cycle, which would be going downwards. We want the cycle to go in the other uh, direction. So we want the cycle to go upwards. This is what we want to achieve. And all of those boosts that our mindset gives us along the way or can give us along the way can help us that it's a cycle going upwards, which gives us success again. Mm -hmm. So please work on not the vicious cycle, but the uh, blessful cycle. I don't know how to call it. It's interesting, isn't it? That we don't really have a word for that. We have one for when things are turning really bad, but the other direction, not really. Uh, so let's work on really having a positive development in this cycle for ourselves and also for our team, our projects, everything we are working on. And then what are the mindset masterclasses you are planning with Collab with this year? A lot, as Sarah <laughs> already said just a moment ago, um, there are a lot of mindset masterclasses we talked about just because as you can I, uh, guess from what Sarah and me have been discussing so far, 
because there are so many things that are connected with mindset um, that are influenced by your mindset so that basically it was difficult to stop for the two of us with all the possible <laughs> topics and let's see maybe we don't know what happens next year but uh, just to give you an idea what will happen this year so what is our plan for this year what you already missed uh but there's a recording that you mm. can have a look at at the color group space what you already missed is the january masterclass here we were talking about how to set your goal uh how to set goals and also rewards for yourself for your team and how that can boost your leadership so when you think about that issue this connection between goals and rewards this is what i was just talking about so you are you yourself are creating this boost you are nudging your brain hey i want those happiness hormones because i have been successful and i even underline this with rewards i give myself which will really uh, boost this feeling of i have been successful i have been doing something great and i even give myself a reward to enjoy so hey what, what my brain will do is say hey i want more of that Please give me more of that. What happens is you turn this whole issue of setting yourself goals in something enjoyable. Well, I think a lot of people, when they hear goal setting in companies, will go like, oh, okay, here we go again. No, turn it around, turn it into something enjoyable. So that's what we talked about in January. February, this is about organization culture and what kind of impact does an organization culture have? especially nowadays on remote work. Very often when we have people in the offices, um, the organization culture, yes, will have an impact and will have a big impact. Still, there is also the social interaction that's happening that sometimes can, yeah, let's say mitigate uh, the, in, uh, the effects if the organization culture maybe is not that ideal. But how about remote work? There's no mitigating factors. So if you are really working from uh, from your home office, if you're working remote with the team, with everybody else, you will only have the effects. And if the organization culture uh, has some room to improve, that might be negative effects. And we all know that remote working in itself can be very great. At the same time, um, it's also straining. So if the organization culture is not up for it, we will have this a vicious cycle downwards. And this is not what we want to have, and this is not what's useful for us. So what we will talk about in February is really this link between the organization culture and the success of your work in general, with the focus on success of your remote work. So why is it so much more important when you're working remotely to have uh, a good organization culture and where are the links between the two. May brings us growth mindset and uh, that's what I have been talking about a few minutes before. So what kind of impact can this growth mindset have? How can it boost your self-esteem and also allow you to leave your comfort zone? And here, I guess a lot of you will have heard about this concept of comfort zone before. That feels cozy, right? Does it? That feels, well, comfortable. So nothing to be afraid of. Everything is good. It does have one downside. And this is if you don't leave your comfort zone from time to time to experience and explore new things, you will not learn. And what will also happen is that this comfort zone will get smaller and smaller over time. And just imagine you're in a room and at the beginning, it feels really, really cozy and great. And then this room is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. There will come a time where it's really narrow and that's not good for your growth. And as we have been talking about it, just imagine you being an entrepreneur, an innovator, a collaborator, an academic researcher, and you're sitting in such a small room. You will not be successful in your work. You can't be successful in your work. So what we want to do is we want to do the opposite. We want to explore how we can get out of this comfort zone. And uh, we want to use the growth mindset to make that easier, to make that an interesting and fun experience. So this is our May, June. So the middle of summer, the middle of the year. 
which uh, may mean that you have already received quite a lot of those no's that Kara and me have been discussing already. So hopefully it will not be 99% of no's during your work. Still, it's possible that it has been a lot, especially if you are leading, if you're innovating, if you're collabor collaborating. You might have uh, experienced a lot of those situations where you got those no's. So how can you keep up the spirits? How can you keep stay resilient in situations like this? And again, imagine the situation you're getting a lot of no's. So what, are, what does this do with your self-esteem? If there's constantly this feeling of the other person or the other party is, you know, keeping me away, uh, did I do something wrong? Is my work not good? Um, are my ideas bad ones? So all of those thoughts could emerge if this is really something that's coming along your way quite often. So all the time, no, can really damage your self-esteem. Again, we don't want that. So in June, we will explore what we can do about it, how we can use our resilience to keep our self-esteem and how we can work on that resilience. July, how to manage attention disorder and create your focus. Some of you might say, no, I don't have an attention disorder. I would like to invite you to think about that for a second time. So maybe when I tell you about a person in a moment, you will see, oh, that somehow sounds familiar. Because what is this person doing? This person is in a call simultaneously, uh, checking out the mobile, checking out your emails, having a look at your LinkedIn profile. Did somebody already like, do I have to comment on something? Do I have to uh, write back on something? Uh, having your projects in mind and so on and so on. And this is a situation that really got worse in the last years because we have so many things we constantly try to put our attention to that in a way we are creating our own attention disorder. So it's something we are doing to ourselves because we don't keep the borders intact between focusing on one thing, being able to really close this successfully, enjoying uh, this success, and then we go to the other thing. And I'm not talking about weeks and years here. I'm really talking about half an hour reserved for this, 10 minutes reserved for this, breaks in between, so that our brain has the possibility to go from one thing to the other in a healthy way, not jumping around and having at one time in the day the feeling I'm completely lost and maybe sometimes over the whole day completely lost. So this is our July. September, we are remote again. We are working remote again. And I'm sure all of you have experienced this situation. You are working in a team and there's a new team member coming on board. In the old times, uh, before the pandemic, this would mean that you welcome this person to the office. Everybody says hello. You do socializing and so on. You, This new team member will immediately feel the team spirit that you're having. How about remote work when very often we focus on the topics we need to talk about, the projects we are in, where does this onboarding happen? Where does this feeling the team spirit, getting this feeling that I'm part of this team spirit, where is that? And that's what we will check out together in September. Again, remote working, well, it's a big part of our lives sometimes very useful, sometimes stressful in October, because in October we will have a look at motivation and collaboration, especially when you're in a situation where this collaboration happens between different teams, sometimes even different organizations. The collaboration needs to work and how can we keep everybody motivated to stay on board? As we said before, although they have their own projects, their own things they're working on, and this comes in addition, so how can we really keep everybody onboarded and motivated? December, the closing of the year. And in a lot of cases, especially for our entrepreneurs, for our leaders, for our innovators, 
the time of the year, which usually is very full of things that need to be completed, a lot of things that are still coming along. So it's a very, very full time of the year. What does this mean for us? We need to take our responsibility seriously, especially then in such a challenging situation for ourselves and also for our teams. And that's what we will do in December. So let's take the time in the masterclass to find some possibilities how we can have a positive ending of the year and a very positive December for ourselves and for our teams. So that's 2023, and that was quite a lot, I know. So, yeah, Nadine, that's our plan for 2023. That's amazing. I was thinking, why not? I can go to June already now. <laughs> why not? <I> can... <laughs> <laughs> because when you open the box of what is happening for the year, you know, you have the ah, I want this. You know, I want this. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, you're welcome, as everybody else is. So. Um... Welcome to join the master classes. I think there's a possibility also to check it out, Kara, right? So that you uh, are just a member for a month and you can try yes. it and see how great it is. Or you yes, can decide, you can, I want you all can of those. join membership for Collab With to enjoy the master classes and the workshop we have every month, but as well the premium part of the platform. But this is for another day to explain how it works. And yeah, we have one thing is like you can join only one month if you want. So maybe you can plan, you know, with your calendar. Okay, Nadine is this month here, and this is the topic I want to enter. So then it's like you join, you know, you, you put a, in your calendar some kind of reminder, join one month here, collab with. Perfect. Exactly. Yes. If not, you, you join, uh, and that's all, and then you enjoy all the, all the master classes, which is uh, as well great. So thank you, Nadine, and I am looking forward already for our next Mindset Masterclass. Thanks a lot to you as well, and putting those Mindset Masterclasses in the calendar, and I'm sure we will have a lot of uh, fun as well, by the way, and take a lot of things with us that help us in those uncertain times. Thank you.